Hey again, everybody. Um, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, um, and this is going to be the first video in my series on the ultraviolet catastrophe. So I, rather than just jump right into the equations, I kind of wanted to start this series with a simulation that I created. So the, the ultraviolet catastrophe, which is the black body radiation problem, um, it was something that was being investigated in the 1800s and basically in a nutshell what the question was was if you have a, a cube in space and this cube has the particular property that the electric field at all of its walls are zero okay if that electric field is zero and then there's these standing waves that set up inside how does that radiation propagate from this body um, it's also called a black body so you might also see black body radiation solution. And if you take all of what we knew about um, statistical mechanics, um, electromagnetics and Maxwell's equations, and you applied it to the problem, what you find is that somehow the energy that's outputted from this thing is infinite, <clears throat> which is obviously an absurd result. And is, what the, uh, is why it's called the ultraviolet catastrophe, the ultraviolet catastrophe, sorry. So I kind of wanted to start with just a quick video simulating this, kind of just to visually show how it works, because it's a weird concept to, to wrap your mind around. But anyways, what you're seeing in front of you here is just a simple simulation I threw together. And each one of these green little spheres represents a point in space. So I've got, um, I think it's just a 10 by 10 by 10 cube. So there's a thousand points here. And the dark or the dark green color is an electric field of zero, okay? And the light green color that you're sort of seeing on the inside, and if you line it up right, you can sort of get it straight down the, the viewpoint. So let me try to make it a bit bigger. But that bright orange is actually the electric field in the middle that's sort of glowing and then going back down. This is the, um, the electromagnetic wave equation when it's standing waves or waves in a box is sometimes how the problem is called. So a big part of the problem is this this concept of standing modes different types of standing modes and what we'll see when we get into the math is that for standing waves the mode and the wavelength and the length of the box um, the side length of the cube sorry they're all related they're all sort of one and the same they have relationships and so we can kind of just get a visual for what's going on here i'm going to do i'm going to change the n as well down here in a minute in this box down here, I'm, I can change the end and rerun the simulation. Um, so it's kind of it's an interesting thing to sort of observe. My computer is not super powerful, so that's why the um, the resolution is not great. In 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 uh, an ideal world, I would have more of these pixels. Um, but let's try to zoom in. There is something slightly wrong with my animation. And you'll see these pixels sort of reappear on the left. If, if uh, any of you our graphics experts can tell me why that's happening that would be helpful but what you can see is that you zoom more into this sort of matrix of particles and you see these bright these bright orange ones are just glowing and getting brighter that's at the very center okay so this is um this is for n equals one what does our cube look like at n equals two so i'm going to stop the um simulation i'm going to hit n equals two and then i'm going to run it so you see these sort of four pockets of um electromagnetic waves that are glowing in the middle now. It's a really, really cool uh, to thing to kind of watch. And if I get it right, if I can sort of line this up correctly, we might be able to get a side-on view and we'll see the four pockets on the side too. Ah, it's, it's, it's difficult because of the way the software works that I wrote. It's not perfect by any means. Let's see if we can get a view. Sort of, you can kind of see what's going on here. So this is for n equals two. So the mode would be two. Is you got standing waves in the in the cavity. Uh, can we get this side? I wonder. Sort of. You can, oh yeah, you can see you can see these distinct regions there. Hey, you can you can see there's eight distinct regions for n equals two. All right, so let's uh, let's try n equals three. See what that looks like. And the resolution is going to um, going to get us here, um, but you can you can kind of see a pattern forming, right? There's there's kind of 
And also, notice how the frequency of the oscillations are also related to this. So the frequency and the mode are also correlated because it's an electromagnetic wave, right? So it propagates at the speed of light. That frequency the, is affected, of course, you know, um, by the speed of light in the wavelength. And of course, the wavelength is affected by that mode number. So it's all interrelated. It's a very interesting problem. So we can kind of see here, we get this sort of nine by nine matrix of electric field areas inside our, inside our cube here. Um, let me zoom in because this is going to probably be really small on YouTube. Um, but I will wrap this one up here soon. And uh, maybe we'll just see quickly what N equals four light looks like. I don't think my resolution here is going to be sensible enough to, to see anything interesting happening, but we'll try it. Okay, no, not 34. Yeah, so n equals 4 kind of looks a lot like n equals 2. It's just because of the resolution. And once again, if you go to n equals 2, what do you notice? It, it pulses slower. Okay, so we're getting a very good visual feel um, for how this works. So, uh, if yeah, if you, if you like this, please, please let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. And uh, I'm hoping to do some more follow-up videos on this soon with some actual mathematics.